Hi, this is Chris from Clever Unicorn Games and the Unicorn Collective, back with another interview. Today I have Hawkoon Gorda with me. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Nice <laughs> to be here. I've been looking forward to this. Me too. Um, tell me, uh, Hawkoon, when you are not designing or making games, which is taking up a lot of your time right now, what is it you like to do with your spare time? Spare time, wow. Uh, <laughs> well, most of my spare time uh, is actually spent gaming. There's not much time for much else, really. Um, so uh, I think it's important to be a proper gamer yeah, as a game designer and be in game groups and game with your friends and game with people you don't know. So, <laughs> And I also have a family and uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> so uh, I also play computer games. <laughs> That's kind of like a thing that goes hand in hand with with games designers and, and people that play board games as they always seem to be doing a little bit of uh, video gaming as well at the same time definitely yeah. what's taking up your video game time at the moment what is it that has you hooked uh i'm a big uh, dark souls guy and um yeah <laughs> why do you like to punish yourself so much <laughs> oh it's so rewarding when you finally figure out how to do stuff and getting good at that game is really good uh, <laughs> uh same with the starcraft too uh, i play that a lot really so Star yeah. that's getting on a bit now, isn't it? I have it. I've got StarCraft 2, but I haven't played it for a long time. Yeah, I played it for like the three first years uh, it was out. And I took a long break uh, for like five years or so. <laughs> and I got back into it uh, this year. So Are you are you, are you training up to become an eSports guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't have any chance. Uh, and have you I ever made... seen those guys play and how quickly they I click have... things? And oh, it's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do that sometimes, and I, I can't believe people sit and watch that for hours, but uh, I, I love uh, watching it, and then I get inspired. I want to play myself and do what they do, and, uh, <laughs> and then I try, and then I usually fail at it. But uh, Yeah, because like, you, you've, uh, you've built a couple of buildings. Meanwhile, they've got a thousand Zergs running across the, the, the board at you, <laughs> Yeah, running across the screen. <laughs> but that game is an amazing game. It's so well designed. There's yep. so many creative things you can do. I love when games do that. Create a space where you can do your own thing and outsmart the, the opponent in your own way. And it does that perfectly. It's, it's just very stressful and very you have to be very fast. <laughs> what is your favorite board game? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh, <laughs> I think it's very hard to name one favorite. Uh, <laughs> So I think what I have on top is like um, Chaos in the Old World, as you mentioned. Yeah. And I also love Keyflower. Oh, I played it last night. I played it on Board Game Arena last night. I love Keyflower. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so tense. It's so intense yeah. with that bidding thing. And yeah, it's really cool. And uh, yeah. And also Suburbia is one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, Bezier games. Yeah, they're brilliant. Suburbia is one probably, yeah, my favorite city building game. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're lining up well here. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. spoil it now by throwing in the resistance, please. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so those are top, but I guess it's more interesting to talk about these these games I mentioned. Everyone loves those, or a lot yeah. of people. But uh, I want to make a shout out to I think the game Automobiles, the racing game. Never heard of it. Is it is it good? I think it's great. Yeah. So it's like a bag builder, uh, like a deck builder where you build with cubes to drive your car. And if you want to go on the dark gray spaces, you have to have dark gray cubes, light gray for light gray spaces. That's the basics. But then you have special cubes, like the green cubes give you turbo stuff. And each, you have these different cubes. Each cube represents a card. There's one card for each cube, right? And they just represent that card. But those cards are going to be different every game. So everyone is just building a bag from the same uh, tableau of eight cards every game. But uh, that tableau is different each time. So it's really neat. What inspired you? So what game or was there a theme of a game or a mechanic or, or something else inspired you to start making games yourself? Oh, it, it uh, went kind of hand in hand with getting into board games in itself. So uh, I remember I played Catan and uh, I thought that was the only good board game for a while. <laughs> And then I played Eclipse, and Eclipse was the yeah. gateway game for me, actually. Yeah. As, uh, as you remember, I was a StarCraft fan, and yeah. uh, I was blown away by Eclipse because, wow, this is just like StarCraft, yeah. except I can play it with my friends in real life and yep. drink beer and talk to them, and it was just as good. And that really <laughs> opened my mind because I had all these video game ideas in my mind, and I suddenly realized, oh, they could be board games, and they could be even cooler than video games. Yeah. So that really triggered me, yeah. Yeah, Eclipse was the game that made me want to make games, which is why the one that I developed the longest, which was the Fractured Galaxy, which you saw when we had it at um, Expo last yeah. year. 
that's where that came from. So it was playing Eclipse that made me want to make my own because I I played Eclipse and absolutely loved it, but I thought, how can we make this better? When take it, so you've uh, now had Villagers, which was a huge success uh, last year. Um, Thank you. When going from your head all the way to then getting that out to backers, have there been any barriers that you've hit which have stopped you dead? Like maybe even stopped you for for a while, um, which you then overcame and how did you overcome those barriers? Yeah, okay, that's a yeah, complex question. Um, so big barriers like that. Uh, when I started design, designing games, I thought I'd spend a lot of time on balance, but uh, it turns out that's not really the hardest part uh, because that's mathematical, mostly numbers. Um, what I find hard is like if you have a playtest and uh, something goes wrong, uh, you don't know what the solution is at all. Uh, and it's not the balance, it's more like like with the new game I'm making now, a tile lane game called Streets. Uh, in the earlier iterations, I had the experience where some people didn't get the rules for the game at all, like the basic rules. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know why they didn't get it. So that was really hard. Um, so things like that happens. You get a really abstract problem that you really have to try and fix. And what I found the solution is to just iterate a lot and try really radical things and see what works. And um, I like to figure out a lot of things on my own, just playing it myself. But in cases like that, you can't do that. So you just have to <laughs> play it with someone. So is it, would you say it's a rules writing issue? So Because I find that as well sometimes where, yes, you've got the game in your head. So yeah, whatever you're writing down should be easy for people to understand. But you don't realize that they don't know what's in your head. So they're literally just show, they're looking at what your representation of what's going on in your head is. And that isn't always a understandable uh, narrative, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fact, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the hard. That, that, that's one thing I say as well. It, writing the rule book so that people can read it when you're not around is yeah. probably the hardest part of this for me. Yeah, Wording yeah. it in a way that people understand, that's so difficult. Yeah, it's it's like, a, I think it's a, that's a big part of it. Uh, it's about communication and it's not just the rule book. Um, so in this case, I didn't know, was it the rule book? Was it the way I taught it? Was it the graphic design? Or was it my bad <laughs> prototype? Hmm. It was completely unclear. And in the end, it was, I think it was a combination of all those things. Uh, and also the game was maybe, it was maybe too complex, too much to think about on your turn. So I have to, do a lot of thinking. <laughs> so it's not easy. Streamlining, a lot of streamlining. Yeah, streamlining <laughs> is so much work, and it you end up with something that looks very simple, but it's actually so much work behind it to make everything. Fit. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you've got to try and make it not look too simple because you don't want people thinking that it's simple as well. So yeah, it's a balancing act. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. So have you ever played a game? And this is another question that people hate, but have you ever played a game and you don't have to name it that you really didn't like? But what was it? Was it a theme, a mechanic, or what was it that put you off the game? Think of one. Uh, why shouldn't I name it? Is it? Uh... <laughs> I think uh, from us, from being designers, it puts us in a position where you know we're, we're mocking other people's games and leaving ourselves yeah. open to criticism. So I don't mind. I don't mind mentioning games I don't like, but I know some people can be a bit funny about it because we're all in a business in the same sort of sphere, you know. But it's up to you okay. whether you want to or not. I, I quite happily mention them because, well, most of the time when I mention that, you know, you've got to remember that games aren't for every, you know, each game isn't for every person. Not yeah. everybody's going to like a game. And unless you're really digging into one that everybody notoriously hates, then I think you're okay. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I I tend to not like a bunch of games that people really do like. Like I always mention the Resistance, hate it, yep. hate the Resistance, but it's a well loved game. Lots of people like it. I don't, ha you know, my reasons for hating it are more about the reaction that it brings out of people rather than the game itself. You know, yeah, that's yeah. that's my dislike of that kind of game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I don't like pandemic or co ops. So yeah, but it's taste, matter of taste. But uh. I think I can say the game without upsetting people, really, because... Okay, so the game is Everdell. Okay, um, okay, yeah, that is a, a bold claim, because people love that game, but I am going to say right oh. now, I agree with you. Oh! <laughs> okay, so here, here is the thing. Uh, it's probably a very, very good game. Most yeah. people love it, with a good reason. Uh, but the thing is... Um, it's like the opposite game of the Villagers, actually, I think. 
it's like everything I think I did well with villagers, they've done in the completely opposite way in Everdell. So it kind of represents the opposite of what I like. So in that way, it's very interesting. Yeah, no, I, I would agree completely with that. I mean, I really like villagers. Villagers is good fun. I've enjoyed playing Everdell, but I think it's way too much for what it is. There's too much going on. It's got the same thing. We talked before about Terraforming Mars. I enjoy playing Terraforming Mars, but it's a mess. You know, it's a lot of cards that do lots of different things. And if you forget things, it can mess up your game. Um, yep. And that's the same with Everdell. You can have a tableau of cards with do, that do so many different things you can forget and then have to search around the cards looking for your actions. And there's nothing more frustrating than going around all your actions and missing an action and going back and then, you know, trying to figure out, you know, all the actions you can do, which I think for that kind of tableau building card game, it's probably too much in my eyes. And there that I think about it's like... Um... There's the whole, like in villagers, I stripped away all the resource gathering and paying resources for stuff. They have that in Everdell, and I don't think that's the interesting part. The fun part is those really cool cards. So I wish they'd done it that way, just the cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also... that would certainly help out a lot, because you're not then worrying about going and doing your worker placement and grabbing your things, and yeah. Yeah, and you have these cool uh, abilities on the cards, like the Undertaker and all that, and... But it says, oh, you can use this cool point scoring engine two times. <laughs> it scores you two points if you do it once and four if you do it twice. Something like that. Yeah. I think it should be unlimited. Like yeah, that's kind of neutering limited. it, isn't it? Yeah. It's neutering the, 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 the system so you can only get, you know, a, not a, a very substantial amount of points out of it, even though it's quite an expensive card to put down. Yeah, it, it makes sense balance-wise, I'm sure. I'm sure if they've tested it thoroughly and everything. But uh, I like to get something in a game and just get to exploit it. Like in Caverna, if I have a room that says, oh, oh you get one point for each sheep, then it's yeah. cool to be able to get 30 sheep, right? I love uh, Caverna. <laughs> what is it? Well, we know what you're working on right now. How is Streets going? Uh, well, we haven't launched the Kickstarter yet, so we don't know. Uh, what's very exciting is that... Um, I mean, how is it going design-wise? How are you how are you getting on? Is it coming together oh, yeah. exactly as you hoped? Well, yeah, it's been a long journey, actually. I've been working on it for uh, it's, uh, getting uh, close to two years already. <laughs> uh, but we, with Villagers, we weren't uh, completely finished in it with it when we launched it. Uh, and especially as we threw in some expansions that I had just started working on. But this time, we were very much ahead, and it's all finished, really. Um, that feels very good. Like I have the game in front of me from the factory with the actual components. That's uh, good. It looks it looks very similar to Villagers as well, so it's going to look really good on the shelf next to it. Yeah, we kind of went with that, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing that uh, the next one's Cities. <laughs> yeah, wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a bit similar to Streets, but yeah. <laughs> and then Planets, and then Galaxies. You've got to keep scaling up. <laughs> you might, might be onto something there, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, yeah, I've, so I've given away a secret. That's how it's going. <laughs> yeah, so villagers is the Middle Ages and this is uh, modern life. So yep. Future next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a tile layer. And yeah, we have an, a tile. That's an ice cream shop. And What's that on? Is that on punch board or is that, is that two millimeter punch board? Yeah, uh, nice. yeah I think it's yeah. two or 2.5. So yeah, you play those into a city and they have a little road on there and that tells you what street it is in. So this is like a ice cream shop. You want to put it where there's lots of kids, lots of families. Is it in focus? Yeah, yeah, just about. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can see it. I don't have a good web camera, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So that's it. You place one building at a time, and its scores depends on where you place it. And there are some cool mechanics for meeples moving around. And yeah, it's very is that, interactive. Is that your? Are you doing the artwork as well? Yeah, artwork. So you're doing it all yourself? Artwork. Yeah, I do. <laughs> So I have my uh, Dave uh, Clark is my publisher and developer, yeah. so he does the business side of things. And, yeah. yeah, helps me out a little bit, but yeah, it's mostly me. Yeah, no, because it's good. You've really got that style down. You know, the style that's sort of eye grabbing. It really grabs people. And that was the amazing right. thing about Villagers, really, is that the, there wasn't a lot of art. There isn't a lot of art. It's very simple cards, but the way that it's designed graphically is very eye catching, and that's yeah, really, really did it. A justice <laughs> and in a way if you think about it it's kind of easier for yourself isn't it as well because because you don't have to worry about huge art it means you can do them quicker and you can get them done quicker which yeah that's a big part of making the game yes and that's yeah i can't praise you enough for that is the the fact that you got such a simple graphic design choice so eye-poppingly good that you know it took off and did as well as it did it's amazing and it just yeah. happened to be such a good game as well at the same time 
<laughs> what so. do you think here's a question we don't normally ask just to throw you what do you think yeah. it was with villagers that did it for you was, was it that people were going in and checking the rules or was it just the graphic design and the visual presentation of the game i think it definitely was a combination uh it has good art that people likes but there are games with better art that didn't do as well as villagers did um dave did an excellent job with the marketing and the campaign that's yeah. something um but there's also, we had a free print and play that did pretty well. So we had people who were familiar with the game who said, yeah, this is good on Board yeah. Game Geek. So there was some confidence in there, I think. And we had a community who got to play the game uh, for quite a while on print and play and give us feedback on Facebook and um, really help us make it. And they also spread the word, of course. Uh, so yeah, combination of those. Yeah. And it's, it's good in a way as well that it is such a perfect game for print and play because it's mostly card based because there's so many games out there that you just can't do print and play because there's so many tokens and things involved. But yeah, this is the kind of game that's yeah perfect for print and play. And now moving on to, you know, digital, digital platforms. I'm sure you've already plugged it into TTS or one of them at some point. Yeah, yeah. And done it through yeah. there as well. Yeah, really early. So that was strategic right from the start, really. Uh, I knew that this was my first go about I had tried making games, but this was the first one that I was going to try to actually get published. So I thought, OK, it has to be cheap. It has to be easy to print and play. And it has to look really nice so people will want to print and play it. Because that's I, that's, I think that's the challenge for new designers. Why the hell will anyone want to try your game, right? Yeah. Yeah. They should they want to play designed, finished games, not like a stupid prototype. So <laughs> you have yeah. to use every advantage you can think of. So yeah. Yeah, this is one thing I push for, and a lot of people tell me I'm wrong about this, that when you are taking a game out and playtesting it with people especially, I try and make the game look as good as possible. Now, it is a double-edged sword, because you find that if you make it look as good as you possibly can, people will be less prone to giving you critical feedback, because they think you've spent so much time on it that you're not going to take it very well. So people are less prone. But, on the other hand you know it it looks so good that they're going to want to keep playing because if somebody just has pieces of cards with writing on them they're less invested with the game and they're probably not going to enjoy it as much because they want something that looks aesthetically pleasing so it, yeah, yeah I, i'm all for making your prototypes look as good as possible um just to keep people more invested with the game and then filtering out the feedback that you get you know and trying to push to get more critical feedback yeah i agree with that uh, i do that as well um it just helps people understand what you're trying to do, I think, if uh, it looks like it's supposed to. So yeah. mm. what people are supposed to feel, that's also part of it. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. What would be one piece of advice you would give to a new designer with an idea in their head? What should they do, in your opinion, advice-wise? OK. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, get their hands dirty. Uh, don't walk around with an idea in your head for years. So just make a prototype. Uh, I would recommend doing it in Tabletop Simulator and play it against yourself yep. and just go from there. Uh, don't worry too much, but just try to make it so that every turn is fun to play, even against yourself. And then you're onto something if you pull that off. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I I think you need to don't only play test with other game designers uh, because they're so good at play testing. Uh, they're like elite troops of play testing. Uh, they can deal with anything you put in front of them. And they're going to be very polite and they're going to get everything but uh, if you put it in front of non-gamers uh they're going to struggle a lot more uh, more with the game um they're likely to make more mistakes and those are the same problems that uh, your customers are going to have even uh, proper gamers are going to have the same thing uh to some degree so try try doing that uh you can do it uh, play it with regular gamers as well uh they are also going to be very honest and you're going to see on their faces if they're having a good time or not. You know, they wanted to go play a proper board game and instead they're playing a prototype. Yeah. <laughs> if you can make them enjoy themselves doing that, yeah, I've got something good. Uh, but designers are going to be more like wearing their designer hat and thinking of clever things to say. And, you know, it's not the same thing. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for coming and speaking to me today, Hakun. This has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you. We're done already. Wow. Yeah. <laughs>